What a joy. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait for you to meet my brain. And thank you for your events, the incredible event and the research you're doing. I was really excited for this day. I'm wow. ready. It's going to be fascinating. Okay, I can't Come wait. Let's go. So, Megan, thank you so much for doing this with us. Our mission is to end the whole idea of mental illness. Mm. These are brain health issues. We get your brain right, your mind tends to follow. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, I read your history, I just looked at your scans, I looked at your testing, I have a good idea why you're here, but I want to hear from you. Tell me your goal. So my brain is disorganized. Staying on track, impossible. Staying focused, impossible. I'm a talk show host. I have to constantly catch myself not to jump from one subject to another. Somehow, as we're having this discussion, so many things come into place that I can end up in so many places we can never get, in, get to the bottom of the conversation we were trying to have. So I struggle with all this, which is why I'm, and now it's stopping me from reaching my maximum potential at work. And when did the lack of focus start? It started at age 13. I was a top student until that point. Well, I continued to be a top student until I graduated. But, but there was a shift. There was a shift. A boyfriend cheated on me. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah. And how have your relationships been like since then? Went through a couple more cheating relationships, then steady afterwards. Steady in terms of staying with normal people, healthy people that I didn't necessarily love though, but they were steady, they were stable. So I could stay with them. I had two relationships, five years each. It was beautiful. It, this is the first time in my life that, because I'm scared of my psychologist, I'm not in a relationship because she thinks that I jump into relationships because of the codependency thing, which is really accurate. When I saw you fill out the questionnaire, you met virtually all of the criteria for having ADD mm -hmm. or ADHD. The big problem with that is you didn't before the age of 13. And I read that your doctor thinks it's not ADD, it's anxiety. Um, so looking at your brain is going to be really important. Yes. Um, because so much of what you describe or what women describe when they have ADD from being late to being distracted, to being disorganized, uh, to needing excitement in order to really pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you do with stimulus? Palpitation. My, I'm sorry? My heart starts to pound. You so, mean like Adderall? Like Adderall or caffeine or nicotine? Pal or? Palpitation. So it doesn't settle you? No, anxiety. And it doesn't focus you no. and it doesn't calm you. It activates you. How many times have you tried Adderall? Twice. Two? No. Maybe three or four times. Enough for me to know this isn't working. And how old were you when you came to the United States? 22. And why did you come here? Hollywood. Hollywood? <laughs> yes. And do you work at a television station or did you work at a television yes, station? Yes, I had a talk show uh, for two years. Uh, it aired on Fox 11. And then it started, uh, when I started it, I was a nervous wreck. So the first three months of my show, I have no idea how I pulled it off because I remember crying hysterically in between shots. But somehow, as I would get back to the room in front of the guest, I was fine, totally fine. And then as soon as the guest would leave, I would go back and cry hysterically. I didn't know what panic attacks were because it was so embedded in me. I thought that's normal. Do you know how to break a panic attack now? I have a few people I call right away. No, no, that's not what I mean. So I always, I think of four things when you have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Don't leave. Because if you leave, the anxiety will control you. Mm -hmm. Breathe in this very specific 15 second breath pattern. Four seconds in, hold it for a second and a half. Eight seconds out, hold it for a second and a half. If you do that four times, panic attack goes away. Because what you're doing is you're controlling your physiology rather than the anxiety controls mm -hmm. your physiology. So I'm just the hurricane. I need direction. My father was like that. He was a hardworking, self-made man. So he decided to put his last name on different streets that he built, different shopping centers, he built different medical centers. Iran is not the country for that because once you reach a certain point power-wise in a country like Iran, either you side with the government or they will kill you. This is public knowledge. And one day they gave, the day after he refused to make a political donation, he got a call. Before we knew it, he was thrown from the rooftop of his own shopping center and all of his assets were blocked and we were threatened and had to, we got kicked out of the country overnight or we would have lost our lives. So that's a fear. So, really. so it was really clear that he was murdered? I mean, I don't think my dad would have gone to the 37th floor of a building and jumped down, you know? He had a lot of unfinished business. He just, we were having dinner and said he'll be back in 10 minutes. It was next door to us. He got a call. And you were how old when that happened? 20. 20. Yeah. So we do a study called SPECT. And SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. Okay. And then my job is to balance. Okay. And SPECT basically tells us three things. Good activity, you mm -hmm. have a lot. Too little or too much. Okay. And then the goal is to balance it. Maybe. Here. I'm zooming. Blue is average activity. Red and white are the most active parts of the brain. And in a healthy brain, the back part should be really active and everything else sort of quiet. And this makes sense. So All the right. front the frontal cortex shouldn't be very active. No. I bet your mind is very hard. So if we look at your skin, you have a busy brain. Yeah, very busy, disorganized. You have a great cerebellum, so that sort of goes against you have ADD. Your history is so classic for it after 13. But ADD doesn't happen after you're 13. ADD happens from the time you're born. Mm -hmm. And if you have ADD after 13, I'm thinking it's physical trauma, head trauma, or it's emotional trauma. Oh, sure. And there's a pattern I talk about called the diamond pattern. I've published research on this, that you worry, mm -hmm. you hold on to things, and if things don't go a certain way, you cry and get upset. Mm -hmm. You're anxious and sad. Mm -hmm. And this comes from past Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like EMDR. Because I published a study on, on police officers who were involved in shootings. They all had this pattern and couldn't go back to work. And after eight sessions of EMDR, they all went back to work. Okay. So, and then if we look at the outside surface of your brain, is you have a Stunningly beautiful brain. So, um, to be beautiful and have a beautiful <laughs> brain, it's dangerous <sighs> to whatever guy falls in love with you. So, um, yeah, this is not an ADD brain. I've seen 20,000 ADD brains. Um, it's emotional. Yeah. My cousin is a psychiatrist. I think I would hire, if I was you, I'd hire a professional organizer to help you be organized. I would, oh, you're smart. I, I mean, thought about this. That, and, and I'd pay them for six months so you can't blow them off uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> or you lose the money uh -huh. and have them over teach you 
organization. And when you have a wealthy dad, probably a lot of people did so Correct. for you. So Correct. you never learned if you would have went into the military, Correct. your organization would be fine. <laughs> oh, thank you. I needed somebody to understand this without calling me a spoiled brat. Yes. <laughs> so there was a, this was a big relief. I thought I'm crazy. That must have been a huge loss for you, not only because of how much you loved your dad, because of the radical shift. Yes. And that's why there's still some depression. The anxiety center is still high. Probably off Prozac would be higher. higher. Your brain's worry center or gear shifter is busy. Mm -hmm. And it's totally mendable. Okay. Do I want it to be? Do I want to mend it? Don't, don't fall into the trap where I need to suffer in order to be okay. helpful. That's, not That's a lie. Okay. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs>